Welcome to the Texas High School Football Coaches Show on Lone Star Gridiron. I'm Chris Daly, and it's my belief that the men that make up the fraternity of Texas high school football coaches are much more than a bunch of thick neck guys with whistles. They do so much more than teach technique and the X's and O's of football. They take young boys and change them into young men of character. They get kids to believe in themselves, to trust others, and to put others ahead of themselves. Texas high school football coaches are unique in how they impact the lives of these athletes as well as the generations those kids touch. In this show, I sit down with a different Texas high school football coach each time and learn about them. Not their record, not their on-field accomplishments, but who they are and what they believe and what it means to be part of the greatest sport in the greatest state. Wow, season three of the Lone Star Gridiron Texas High School Football Coaches Show. I have to tell you that in 15 years of doing these shows, this has become my absolute favorite. Yes, we're three seasons into a show that looks at what what makes Texas high school football coaches tick and, and tells a little bit about their journey. This is episode one of season three, and it's a great one. Before we get started, I want to thank our newest sponsor, Tate Barber with State Farm Insurance. Tate Barber is a State Farm Insurance agent from the Carthage, Texas area. He's married. He has three kids. He's been a State Farm agent for over 16 years. He's a graduate of the University of Texas at Austin, and his agency has qualified for numerous State Farm awards over the year. He's done a great job. They focus on auto insurance, homeowners insurance, renters insurance, life insurance, and business insurance throughout the Carthage, Texas area. He's a board member of his local church, as well as a board member of the Carthage, Texas Lions Club. Call 903-693-7555 or stop by his office for a free car insurance or home insurance quote. Or you can check him out at TateBarber.com. Again, that's Tate Barber State Farm Insurance. Um, I also want to give a quick background on this week's guest. It is Coach Scott Surratt. He has been the head coach of Carthage for the past 11 years, and in that time, he has turned in some phenomenal results. The Bulldogs have had nine or more wins 10 times, and Coach Surratt has never had a losing record during that time as he's led Carthage to six state championships. Even more amazing than that, his teams have more state titles than playoff losses. Uh, that's crazy. Uh, Coach Surratt, however, is so much more than just the W's, as you will find out right after this. You're listening to the LSG Sports Network, the authority on Texas high school football. Hey, did you play Texas high school football? If you did, you're part of an elite group, the Brotherhood of Texas High School Football. All football players, past and present, who have ever suited up in the Lone Star State are eligible. Go to LoneStarGridiron.com slash Brotherhood. And thank you for the part you played in the greatest sport in the greatest state. So many Americans struggle with finances. Tate Barber with State Farm Insurance in Carthage, Texas is here to help. Visit TateBarber.com or call 903-693-7555 and find out how State Farm can help today. This show is brought to you by the book, all I Need to Know I Learned from My Texas High School Football Coach, a handbook of wisdom for parents, young people, and yes, even coaches. Head over to www.learnedfromcoach.com and order your copy to support sharing the stories of these great coaches and leaders. That's learnedfromcoach.com. All right, everybody join me in welcoming Coach Scott Surratt to the show. Coach, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Chris. I appreciate you having me on. 
Oh, you bet, you bet. Uh, and first off, congratulations on another great season at Carthage. Uh, <laughs> wow. Well, I appreciate it, Chris. It's been a uh, it's been a crazy run. It sure has. It sure has. But as you know, this show really isn't about wins and losses. It's about you as a coach. Uh, so first, we like to, uh, I guess, take a trip back in time to when you first got involved in football, when you first decided you wanted to be a coach, and then bring us all the way back, stop by stop, everywhere you played or coached or anything involved with coaching. Uh, Chris, I've uh, I had the dream like most most of us in the coaching business that you know play you know either major league baseball and I knew I wasn't gonna play NFL it wasn't big enough but uh, um, but I knew I wanted to to coach if I couldn't achieve that goal and, and I found out earlier that I wasn't gonna play major league baseball and so I knew I, I always wanted to be a coach I was actually a head baseball coach for uh, ten years and but I was the offense coordinator nine out of those ten years while I was doing that. And, uh, so, but my first coaching stop was at uh, uh, Redwater. I coached under Johnny Williams for one year, and uh, and then I went to Little Cypress, Maurice Field, and Orange for two years, and worked for Rodney Russell, the guy that uh, I played high school. He was my high school head coach, and uh, then I went back home, did the hometown thing, Lennon Kill there for five years, and worked for John David Russell. He was a defensive coordinator when I was coming up through, and. Um, and I went to Waxahachie for one year, worked with Thomas Brooks, and uh, loved it there. We had, a, we had a great football team, and then I got called and offered the Texas Tie Offensive Coordinator for Barry Norton, and I was there for eight years. And then I've uh, been here at Carthage for 11 years, so 28 years of coaching. Nice, nice. So in that time, uh, one of the things uh, I've discovered in knowing coaches and being involved in Texas high school football is that is that nobody does it by themselves. Uh, talk a little bit about some of the coaches that were influential in your career and why. Well, I think the number one would be my high school. My athletic director, head football coach, would be Rodney Russell. And, uh, you know, he was, he was, I'd ha- he'd had to be the biggest influence. Uh, and the reason I, I'd say him, you know, I had a lot of good ones, but, uh, he instilled the toughness in us every day. Um, he held everybody accountable, uh, mm-hmm. you know, whether it was uh, spotting people on, on the bench press or whatever. Everybody was accountable and uh, in the will to win. He taught me the will to win. and, and But I had a lot of good ones on, on the way. Uh, Bill Knight at East Texas Baptist, I played baseball for. John Day Russell was our defense coordinator in high school. I was a linebacker, and he, you know, he he also instilled a lot of toughness back in those, those days. You, you got what you did was hit every day, and uh, you took Tylenol or Aspen before uh, before you yep. practiced. It, it was a uh, it was a good old days. Um, but um, you know, in the area, you know Jerry Bennett and uh, Dennis Alexander, big, big influence because they they don't get better than those guys, and um, you know they're they're great motivators and had a lot of success in, in East Texas. Nice. So uh, you mentioned the good old days. What what are you seeing as some of the major changes that have happened since then? Well, you know, obviously the um, with the concussions and things, and it, I, I think it's you know it's bigger, faster, and stronger. The kids. Uh, I mean. Back when I played football in '86, we had a one lineman that was um, 225 pounds, and we thought he was a giant. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> and now uh, that's the biggest, you know, in the speed of the game, it's you know, like trucks running together and, and things. And um, that's the reason we have to do so much teaching on how to tackle and, and things. And you don't get as much tack. I think um, you see it on Friday night, you don't tackle as well as you used to for you know two reasons. I think they're faster. But uh, also, you don't get to work on tackling as much uh, with UIL rules, and uh, so I think that hurt, hurts the game a little bit. Nice. So, um, you know, as, as we all know, co- coaching is, in, in one aspect, it's teaching the steps and the, the form and the function, but it's so much more. If you could talk a little bit about what are the important things about coaching Texas high school football. Yeah, there's no doubt it's, it's making a difference, you know, in the kids' lives and, you know, be, being that role model that maybe they don't have at home. But, uh, you know, some of my f- favorite players, Chris, have never played an important snap. 
and uh, but I've been uh, you know hopefully an influence on them and and uh, you know it, it what what gets me going a little bit is I sometimes I'll get a letter from a player that uh, you know I hardly never played and he said I'd come to it. I got one actually the other day and said coach I know I didn't get to play many snaps but I would come practice every day. Uh, for you because it, it was the funnest time of my life and um, so that 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 meant a lot to me and it, and you know kind of hit home with me and but it, that, I think that's it is just making difference in players lives especially with the ones that are getting all the attention is getting you know these are the, all the tackles and then the carries or the passes or mm-hmm. catches or whatever those guys get the attention but the 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 guys that go through the program stick with it and you make a difference when those guys that uh you know that 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 means a lot to me. Nice. So, um, <clears throat> if you could talk a little bit about the um, the community uh, or, or the important factors in a community that turn a program from just another sport to this whole town is rabid about that that sport. Well, when we got here 11 years ago, it is a lot of pride in, in Carthage. There's no, no question about it, but there wasn't a whole lot in, in the football program. You know, we, we won a couple of baseball championships, and uh, there just wasn't a lot of pride. But in, the athletic athletics is, um, you know, that's what kicks off, the, especially football, is what kicks off the school year. Right. And I think if you talk to principals, um, the first part of the school year goes as, as the football team goes and, and not mean it has to win or um but if if you got coaches and uh, that would di- discipline the football players and the athletes and and help the principals and the teachers and, and it goes a long long way but the pride in the community when it's um you know in Carthage when Friday night it's a, it's a Friday night party everybody comes to the party and then they can't wait to get to the next one and uh it's it's always fun to listen to them. We can't wait the next Friday night, Coach. And and as a coach, you're thinking, well, <laughs> this one's over. Let us breathe a little bit and uh, go enjoy it with our family and get ready for the next. One. Nice. Um, a lot of a lot of fans, their only interaction with the coach is seeing their behavior on the sideline. Um, they don't really know about the hours. They don't know about you know the the the, the day to day minutia. If you could talk about some of the some of the aspects of coaching um, or challenges that maybe people don't realize. Well, the biggest challenge is is you don't get to see your family as much as you want to during football. But that's that's what the business we got into and the sacrifice and and um, that's the reason you better pick a uh, a good coach's wife. And I, I have a great one. She understands and she understands the difference we make in in kids' lives. And like I said, we're we may be their number one role model as as coaches and and uh, but um, that that's the biggest deal is you know the sacrifice away from the family because we do spend you know hundred hours a week or more and uh, working and so we're not going to see see those guys much I I make it very important to see my kids um, and get my coaches to. To make sure they see their kids and things because it, you know, if, if mama's not happy at home and the kids are not happy, it, it's hard. It's tough to work hard and, and be focused at work. And but we are, we're all family first, and I'm not just saying that. We probably have our best football games or the ones on the side every day because we several of my coaches have, myself included, have either fourth, fifth, or sixth graders, and we have football games going on every day at practice. Nice, nice. So. So, coaching is a lot of sacrifice. It's a lot of long hours. But if somebody came up to you and said, "Coach, I don't get it. What What is it? Tell Tell me a moment or story that comes to mind about what you love about this profession." Well, I, I probably go back to to my Texas high days, and uh, I, I coached a kid. I called him James Ray. Story. His uh, His name is James Ray. I picked him up every morning. Uh, around 6.30, and he had a house. It was uh, smaller than my office here. And, um, you know, he had no heater, air, and no hot water. And it was just, you know, a sad story, but just a great kid. He ended up being our quarterback, most valuable player of the district. And and, uh, the year before we got there, he busted up his knee, and they didn't take care of it. Uh, He didn't have surgery or whatever, and 
we got it fixed in the spring. He was ready to go six months later, and and you know just and he still he's uh, he's working at Texas High now. So that that's the you know that's the kind of little moments uh, I could tell you a million of those things, but the James Ray story is one that's it's on top. Nice, nice. So um, it seems like a, a coach can move into an area where like you mentioned, that maybe they don't have a strong football program. The community gets excited, gets behind it, and they build it up. And and you see that story a lot. But how do you keep it up there? (laughs) How do you keep it, you know, once those kids that are all excited, once they've graduated, how do you keep that going? Well, it's tough. You know, the the first championship is, is, is unbelievably tough. We got the first one in uh, here in 2008, and it was first in school history. But the ones after that are the ones that are tough. So the, the second and the third in a row, that, that's tough. You know, and we just talk about let's don't let's don't worry about what we've done in the past. Let's see what we can we can do. And it, everybody is um, you know graded or judged on their senior year. How are you going to go out on your senior year? Um, yeah, they won it in 2008, but how are you going to win? go out your senior year and uh, but and we also talk about let's don't worry about the last ring let's worry about the next ring and uh you know let's work for the next ring and and uh, you know just play for everybody that's played before us nice and and what advice could you give to uh maybe a young coach just starting out maybe at a program where they've never had a ring and it's not even in the equation what kind of advice would you give those guys uh, just head down, work hard, do everything, you know, the AD or the head coach asks for it. Because nowadays young, young kids want to come out of college. They want to jump right to the varsity. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, they don't want to start and, uh, you know, put their time in a, a junior high. And it's the hardest thing to, right now, Chris, is finding junior high coaches because nobody wants to go down there and coach them. Right. And um, so it, it, it's tough. Or young guys. Now, there's some older guys that later in their career, that's, a lot of them got, but it's hard to get young guys to come in and understand that uh, you know earn your stripes, be patient, don't take a bad job. Um, I've, I've had a few here that's taken because uh, of the success we had. They've taken bad head coaching jobs, and um, you know, and then they kind of got marked uh, going to an 18 or whatever is mm-hmm. you know it's going to be tough. They got to work themselves back up up the chain again and because of their record and they're really good coaches yeah so uh, moving forward what what goals do you have left you have all kinds of rings <laughs> what else, what else do you have well you know when i hit number we we did hit the fifth championship you know my personal goal was a uh, you know i want to win 10 so <laughs> nice. uh, so that that would be a personal goal, but my main goal is to you know stay healthy enough to uh, coach my son. He's a uh, he's in the fourth grade right now, and and uh, I want to be healthy when he gets here. Then and uh, when he graduates, I have 36 years, and hopefully we can do something special when when he's in the program. Whether he's a starter or not, but hopefully we can do something special like we have with him through our program. That, that's the main goal. Because uh, I don't coach my daughter, I'm the athletic director. She's a volleyball player now, and I, I don't know anything about that. I just go watch her and just sit back and relax and make sure she's playing hard. You just you're just a rabid fan on those games. I, I am, but you know, like I said, uh, my, my main goal is to and I, and I'll be in the retirement age at that time, and I'll, when uh, my son Jet gets through here, and I have to make a decision at that point. Hopefully, I'm healthy enough to keep rolling. Nice, nice. Well, good luck on that. And, uh, Coach Surratt, I want to thank you so much for sitting down and sharing some of your story with me. Chris, I appreciate you, man. Have a good day. You're listening to the LSG Sports Network, the authority on Texas high school football. If you played for the Carthage Bulldogs, sign up for the Brotherhood of Texas High School Football at www.lonestargridiron.com forward slash brotherhood. So many Americans struggle with finances. Tate Barber with State Farm Insurance in Carthage, Texas is here to help. Visit TateBarber.com 
or call 903-693-7555 and find out how State Farm can help today. Hey coaches, we want to tell your story as well. So, so get in touch with us and we'll schedule a time to record your interview so we can add your history, your insight to what we hope will be an amazing collection of wit and wisdom from Texas high school football coaches. LoneStarGridiron.com. Access the complete history of Texas high school football, over 100 years of information, win-loss records, coaching histories, individual stats, records, and more. Lone Star Gridiron, the authority on Texas high school football.